well, I'm back, and uh, let's corrupt the world, shall we? All right, well, it has been a minute since I've made a video, and I apologize. Uh, as you can hear, it is awful, and I apologize for that. My sound foam hasn't made it here yet, and when it gets here, that is the first thing I'm throwing up so the audio doesn't sound like complete trash. But bear with me, since uh, we do have quite a few interesting things to get into. Uh, the first four things are going to be um new like interactions that individuals have found out and i greatly appreciate them finding it out and uh informing me of it because now i can do more testing with it so the first wand we have is unstable crystal with a chainsaw and freezing charge so this is probably the most basic setup of this that you can uh, you can do. This was found out by Mark Lari. Since nothing really has a name, I'm going to name them accordingly. And this one we're going to name the Damage Ice Field. It does exactly as the name says. It's a Damage Ice Field. That if we hit the test dummy in the right way, test dummies are a little bit hard to do. We'll get one though. We'll, we'll get one. There we go. So that was physics damage, and uh, that was 30k damage. Uh, the the hitbox on the test dummy is a little bit strange, um, but regardless, this is the setup for it. And uh, I've come to find out that you do need two damage fields to make it work reliably. If you take one off, it's not too reliable. And um, yeah, but... Mark stumbled across this and uh, showed me, and uh, I made it work. The best way is with spell or delayed spell cast. And if you throw more damage fields on, uh, you get something pretty spectacular. Uh, I don't think they're coming back down, but if they do, okay, never mind. We're just gonna fire it at the ground. So you get like a cascade effect. There we go. There's some more. Sometimes it gets a really good one and it'll look like solitaire, but yeah. I thought this was really neat and uh, oh, there was a good one. And you can pick them. So they're physics objects, but they you make them. So it's really cool. And then next we have this, uh, this tech that, um, or sorry, we have this interaction that Letali showed me, and it's really neat. I don't know how to really incorporate it to the best of my abilities, but if you have in, or concentrated light on something, it destroys the bodies. Normally deer are pretty messy. Okay. I had to kill the deer quick before it ran into the test dummy. I don't know if it would have blown up, but you can see the deer's body right here. If we do it with intense concentrate, or sorry, if we do it with concentrate light, there will be no deer body. So let's summon one right here. There we go. So there's no body. The, the properties of concentrate light are that it destroys bodies so it's really cool and the way Letali was using it was to make sure that stuff doesn't spawn extra blood like the polymorph masters and stuff like that but i i saw a neat interaction with chest it makes chest into a like pile so we'll cast i'll try and cast one uh, how can we ensure that I cast one? I don't think we can. There we go. So it, it turned into like a pile of mush. When normally, if you were to kill a chest, we'll use our mist wand again. It turns into a solid object. So it's pretty cool. I don't know the real properties that you can use it for, but 
Like I said, Letalia used it to make sure there wasn't extra blood and maybe you can do it the same. And you can do it with anything. You can pair spells together uh, just using a multicast. So this, uh, this property will be on the mist wand. Um, actually, let's summon in a deer and we can show that off. See, there's no body. And that's because there's a uh, concentrated light paired with the slime mist. So if we had another chest, it would do the exact same thing on the chest. All right, and then we get into this wand. So this was brought to my attention by Kalaman. And you can use piercing on Circle of Fervor and all the other circles, as a matter of fact, but Circle of Fervor has been this useless spell that you cast and it doesn't do anything. Like, oh wow, the enemies can jump in here and get angry and do more damage. That sounds like a fantastic spell. But if we throw piercing on it, then suddenly we get the effects. So you can show it off with this Concentrate Light here. So it has like a delay, and let me make sure, because I wasn't casting a spell in this one. We'll hop back in. Nothing in this one, and we'll hop back in this one. Oh yeah, you have to hit the center of it. And then it gives you an effect for a little bit, and it has like a cooldown. So we're still, still fervored, still fervored, and right... There we go. So it ended right there. And I was trying to think of the the impl implications with like other stuff. Obviously, you can turn it into a sheep. With this one, you can just touch the outer ring, and you'll you'll still be transformed and polymorphed. And then same with uh, electrical. We touch the outer, and then we we fell from right here, and then turned into a sheep. The circles are really neat, but, and then we have the unstable, oh, we'll get turned into a sheep one more time. <laughs> and then, boop. So this one, you still have to hit the center, which is weird. But I think it's only for the first time or until the circle takes effect. Yeah, I... It's weird how spells kind of don't work for a certain amount of time, but it looks like that's the case. And then we got our last, which is freezing, which we're gonna cast up here because it freezes you. And obviously we don't want to be stuck frozen permanently until that ended. And then I don't know how to get Circle of Ver Fervor to work with piercing, but normally Circle of Fervor already does a healing thing, or if you hop in it and they hop out, and they hop back in before it ends, you get two healing, which is really cool. But other than that, it was a neat, uh, neat discovery that I thought should bring some attention because this spell is normally pretty useless. So. Now you have a portable berserkium thing, so if you hit the center. You gotta remember to hit the center, because I obviously don't. <laughs> All right, and then the last one is what Fox Fritter had questioned me about, and that is, what do you do about clouds? So I spawned in some clouds here, and they're, they're pretty obnoxious when you're going up in the cloudscape and stuff like that. I haven't found anything else that really works too well, but Matter Eater works really well. So our little Zen Garden Wand right here. Ooh. Oh no! <laughs> I ruined my Zen Garden! <sighs> but we can, uh, we can just clean it up. There we go. Now it's, now it's nice and cut. We'll have to come back in a few minutes. But what I have here is a Chain Bolt Infinite uh, Matter Eater. Or sorry, 
uh, unlimited matter eater. So what we can do with this, and this is the new build. There's a lot of changes in 1.0, and I'm super excited about them, but I'm also super daunted by them because they're... There's so many changes. Um, this doesn't break spell blocks anymore. So if I swap this with a double, it would just wrap and use all the charges. So this is the working build for a unlimited modifier chain bolt build. Uh, so pretty much we have a unlimited drill. And it eats through clouds because Matter Eater is really good at eating through clouds. And so when you're traveling up in the cloudscape, then you can just use this and be like, oh, I don't even have to deal about the clouds now. The only problem, and I thank you, Alias, for bringing this to my attention, is it doesn't eat through Cursed Rock. So you can't eat through Cursed Rock. It does eat through Temple still, so you could bore your way through just about anything except Cursed Rock. So yeah, really neat discoveries and uh, Thank you for all the suggestions and all that stuff. So we'll check on our corruption and see how, how far it's come. Ah, it's, it's growing. I don't think it was, we were on screen enough for it to grow, but that's okay. But yeah, other than that, hopefully you enjoyed this little creation I've made and uh, you guys have a wonderful evening, noon, and night. Goodbye.